Hey guys, welcome to the Galveston Bay Fishing Show. We are live again on Thursday from Eagle Point Fishing Camp. I'm Eric Valentino, and this is the co-host, <laughs> Captain David Dillman. Hey, y'all. And this is my son, Gray Valentino. Gray, say hi. Say hi, Gray. Say hi. Gray, you're <laughs> <almost dead. laughs> And this is, and this is the producer, Rebecca, my wife. Hi, good to see you guys. Come on. You want to stay with Mama? We're going to be on the computer, everybody. But I'm going to be holding She's Gray over to the side. She's but she'll be the producer in a minute. Here we go. All right, we're here. All right, guys, first, let's talk about thank you, honey. <laughs> this is live television. It's so amazing. Okay, so let's talk first, guys, about last week and how the fishing was last week. Eric, go for it, Dave. Okay. Last week catches kind of the same as the week before. The shorelines, boat towards Kima, and then back towards April Fool Point, produced catches of trout, drum, um, sand trout, and a few flounder coming off the shoreline, so it was good. The middle of the bay system, which is what we know as the Exxon Ailes, Eric talked about it. There it is. Eric talked about it last week and how he's gone out there this time of year and caught fish. But we had some people venture to the middle of the Ailes and they came back with great catches of drum and a few sheep's head. Fishing on the bottom with live shrimp or dead shrimp. So they had some really, really nice drum. So yeah, we it was saw good. We saw we saw different ways of doing it. Like David said, we had people, they want to go out there with the live shrimp, but then we had numerous boats say, hey, you know, we caught them with the dead shrimp, which which I find to be very effective. So they caught them with the dead shrimp as well. And we've had many of the same customers for the last three or four days that have gone out a couple times and they're, and they're getting the, and they're catching fish. That's right. They're catching the drum out in the middle of the Exxon Avis. Galveston Jetty still producing bull reds, slot reds, a few trout, drum, and Sunday, actually, some of my friend, a friend of mine was out there with his son and a couple of their friends, and they ended up catching a few sharks and bull reds, and they had one pretty big bull shark probably about a little over 100 pounds, so it seemed like they had a pretty good trip. So kind of strange to still see some sharks being caught, which means the water temperature is still a little warm, and um, for them it's still and then we saw some catches as you go down this shoreline from Eagle Point. We saw some catches that would stream back up into Dickinson Bay in the what we call the uh, Dickinson Bayou. There's been some nice catches of redfish in there, and that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, that deep water gives them a little bit of protection, especially with this upcoming weather this weekend. And Eric, what is the forecast for this weekend? Yeah, the, the show today is really formatted around this weather that we have coming in. Our and first big cold front of the year, y'all. This is a real, this is going to be the real, this is the real cold Yeah, this is the real deal. So, it's not, it's no big deal to us, but we just wanted to make sure you know that we're talking about a real front. Texas, Northeastern. And what we're looking at, the forecast right now for Friday is 20 to 25 knots, which would translate to roughly 25 miles an hour up to say 30 miles an hour in wind. On Saturday, they're forecasting the same thing, roughly 25 miles an hour to 30 miles an hour. And then on Sunday, it's gonna be forecasted a little bit lower to be roughly 18 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour. So we're gonna talk about that. And hopefully what you get from this, our intention is that there is a high percentage of boaters that understandably they see that wind forecast and, and they're out. And they're not gonna go. They're not gonna go and, and look, we understand. Certainly if you've never had any real action or any real success on where you might go in these sorts of winds. Now, from our standpoint here at Eagle Point, when you're looking at anything over 20 miles an hour, I will tell you that my family's always believed we if we see 20 mile an hour wind or higher, we're all under the same program that we would advise you not to go out into the bay, what we call
called Open Bay. So here we are, a northeast wind is going to be coming like this. Here's north up here, here's south. Northeast is going to be coming like this. And that wind is coming straight across the bay. So if you come out of Eagle Point, or say for example the dike, and you come out into this bay, you're going to catch a tremendous amount of wind and some very dangerous chop. It seems like a northeast really is probably one of the toughest winds to run, to make long runs, no doubt. That. I, 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 Eric doesn't I like do not it. like a northeast <laughs> wind. <laughs> I've made the runs, it's, you know, I mean, it's like, it's one of those deals where you got to know your boat's capability and what you can do, and then you got to be safe in the meantime to see if you're really going to go and try to go where you think you need to be toward the fish line. So there's places to fish under this wind, under the east wind. Maybe not so much 25 to 30. I would probably not go at all at 25 to 30. But typically, Eric, we've been here a long time. You've been here a long time. I've been here a long time. And the you're, a first, you're a dinosaur. Right. The first day of a northeast wind, it's going to blow, and it's probably going to blow all day long. But sometimes that second day, they may predict that little 20 to 25, but it's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you'll see it start to play that. Yeah. And so it does get fishing. Just kind of time where you go and when you're going to try to go and where you're going to try to go. Where are you going to launch? What are you going to try to do? So there's definitely places to fish under this kind of wind condition. But I think the first thing you got to do is you got to dress for fishing success. That's right. So we're going to get to where we think you can fish over the next three days. Maybe even right. four days. Right. Five days. The temperature is going to be chilly. They're already predicting it's going to be chilly. So we'll get to where we think you can fish and you can catch fish, but let's talk about how you're going to dress before you go. That is correct. So, so I think, go ahead. Well, so we've already seen numerous people, including myself. I came down here today. I came down in short sleeve shirt and shorts and just some regular old shoes. The, the air just blows right through these shoes. And... Hey, I don't like the cold. And he closed every window I had open because he said he's closed. I he's closed cold, all the windows and it's cool. So I had my jacket on and you know it's a really good insulated kind of water water. I mean they are they're waterproof shoes. And so I was good. My feet were I was warm. So where are we gonna start? Let's start with the feet. Let's start with the pants. Let's just start with pants first to keep your legs warm. So they make Wrangler makes some insulated pants, I think you've seen me wear them. Mm -hmm. And they're fleece lined and they're water resistant on the outside. And Wrangler makes them, you can look them up online, you can buy them online. I bought mine at the factory stores in Lamar. And these are probably some of the warmest pants I've ever, I mean they are, they're the nicest pants I've ever worn. They're really soft, they're easily, you can maneuver in them. Um, they're actually carpenter pants, so they give you the extra room. and. I mean, that fleece lining, that's all you need to have on, period. I mean, I don't need to dress with anything else on. No more protective bib or anything like that that's bulky. I mean, I put those pants on with, I'm wearing Merrill type hiking shoes, tennis shoes. Mine are more of a tennis shoe, but I do have hiking boots also when it gets a little chillier. And they're completely water resistant. I can go to the back. To, I went through millions of shoes since I've been here trying to find the right shoe. And I finally found that they're not cheap. But they're well worth the money. Well worth the money. And what's, but what is the angler going to get out of these shoes? Well, number one, give, give me some more. You want to keep your feet dry. Okay. You have got to keep your feet dry and keep the warmth in your body. Once your feet get wet, your hands get wet. When you get wet, you're miserable. You're miserable. You don't want to fish. You get wet. You get cold. And I don't care. Once you get cold, you can't put on enough clothes to get warm until you get inside. So you got to stay dry and you got to stay warm. And that's the key to it all. So shoes are definitely a must because when you're running a boat across the open water this time of year, the water is going to get chilly and it's going to splash and your deck's going to get wet. And if you're yep. sitting there in tennis shoes and your feet get wet, just like Forrest Gump, told, just like they told Forrest Gump, you got to keep your feet dry. And a lot of this, look, we know this isn't like fishing. I mean, excuse me, this, this isn't like snow skiing in a blizzard in Vail, Colorado. What we're talking about is 
we've heard of people when they go out in these conditions and they just don't have a good time. So we want you to go out and have a good time and we're just giving you a couple of ideas that you don't get caught, you know, unprepared. And right. then if you're unprepared, you're going to have a bad time. And you're going to cut your trip short and just come on. One of the big points of this show that David and I talked about when we talked about doing the show is how to promote people to use their boat more, have more success, have more fun, enjoy themselves. And we all agreed. I wasn't happy this morning when I was cold. <laughs> no, nah, he came in and then I was like, and it's really not that cold, but he was cold because it's blowing across this water here. It's not that cold outside, but coming, that water's chilled down. And when that air blows across that water, I mean, it's air conditioned. Let's face it, that's what, that, that's what AC is. So the second part is your upper body. How do you keep your torso warm? And then how do you get it to where when it warms up, if it warms up, you can start to get hot. You can cool yourself down a little bit. And that is dressing in layers, y'all. You gotta dress in layers. Hey, y'all, we're live here at Eagle Point. Welcome to Eagle Point. <laughs> we just had a customer walk in. So anyway, you got to dress yourself in layers in the top. And what I like to do is I'll put on two or three, and Eric's seen you do it, I'll put on two or three t-shirts a long sleeve shirt, t-shirt, maybe two t-shirts, a long sleeve t-shirt, a sweatshirt, and then I wear my jacket. This is probably one of the best jackets I have. One of my customers bought me this jacket, and it's just like a Sims, but it's a Magellan, and it is a waterproof, windproof jacket, and with all those layers of shirts on and that jacket, I'm warm. That's all I need. Yeah, I don't need a big furry jacket. I can zip myself. It's Velcroed all the way up. Keeps the wind completely out of it. So Sims makes one, and there's probably twice as much as that one, and this has been a great jacket. I wear it every day. I mean, my girlfriend hates it because of the sound, but I think it's the greatest jacket. So you've got the pants, you know, some sort of pants that give you some protection. You've got the, the layers up, up top, and then of course, let's talk about making sure you've got some protection for your, your ears, your head. And the gloves. Eric, why don't you talk about that? Well, you've we, been well, snow skiing enough. You would we, know we, didn't, we didn't finish the head. Well, the head, you can talk. So the stocking, stocking hats. I don't wear a cap at all during the summer because caps, hats, they keep the heat in. But during the wintertime, I want to keep the heat in, so I get a good stocking cap that comes over covers my ears, they make full masks that you can pull over your all your face, which I don't typically like because I wear glasses and it just, it doesn't seem like they fit good when you're wearing glasses, but if you don't wear glasses, like a full ski mask back here, mm -hmm. and keep the wind, keep, uh, you know, keep the wind off your face and keep you keep your warm. But I just wear a stocking cap over my ears and down on me and it works, and then I have this and I bundle up and I'm good to go. I'm layered up and I do not like, I used to wear coveralls, and I used to wear coveralls with big heavy boots and everything, but I've, um, if you fall out of a boat and you have all that clothing on, there's a real good chance that you could lose your life because you're not going to be able to shed it and swim and maneuver if you do fall out of your boat. So that's just something to keep in mind, y'all. So I dress with my ears. You can shed it off. You can get it off your Okay, so then let's go to the hands. We were talking about there's no, there's not a lot of great options for your hands. I know that on the shrimp boats, because it's shrimping, it's a commercial activity. We don't have a bunch of fancy stuff. We might, in the cold weather, cold water, we might just wear a glove like this. It has some, uh, you could almost say like some waterproofing on the inside. On the outside, it has nothing, no waterproofing. But it just allows you, when your hands get cold, to grab onto that fish, grab onto the bait, grab onto the shrimp. When you're calling uh, a net, you know, drag out, you know, this allows you to just have some better grip. And so this, this will help you with grip. It'll help slightly with keeping your hands warm. Uh, but then if you want to get something that really will do the trick, then you need to go to a more like high-end glove. And that's not going to really help you as far as handling your hooks, your bait, uh, a little more bulk, allure. So hands are tough. You know, there's no one perfect answer for that. You might, you might do a little research on that. We're like I said, we're a little more old school because 
for example, when you're on a, a commercial boat, you know, you don't want anything to get entangled with cables and ropes. And winch. Yeah, uh, doors. You got to be got to be careful. So, on a on a fishing boat, that's something you do want to keep in mind. That you want to make sure you don't lose the ability to. Um, yeah. Yeah. Help me out, Dave. Lose the ability to to to, 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 to work your fingers. To work real, your fingers. Real, real, real. So, so they made gloves with the fingers cut off, and I've used some waterproof gloves. The fingers cut out, but it's actually good to have maybe a couple of pairs. One to run your boat in that's fully covered that keeps your hands warm and waterproof. That's, because, good. That, that's a good idea. Because when you're running your boat and you grab that stainless steel <laughs> steering wheel. And it's like, you know, let's just say it's 50 degrees outside and it's not sunny, nothing to warm it up. That, that wheel's cold. Yeah. So it, it really helps. And then when you stop the fish, change over and put the gloves with the cutout fingers so you have use of your fingers. And it works well. So that's what I would recommend. Uh, probably one of the best places to go for all this kind of stuff. And I'm going to go to Cabela's because they have it all. they got everything for the hunter, the fishermen. And they have these winter type clothing for you know skiers. I mean, there's all kinds of things. In your and I like to look yeah. in Carhartt. Carhartt would be good. Academy may be a good place if you get if you have a good academy. Some academies don't carry what you really need by some by others do. So. And then maybe lastly on this subject, one thing that would be really nice, and you know, this might be something that it would be a Christmas gift to somebody. Not a like a a fairly a fairly high end full like bib and jacket suit. So Carhartt, for example, makes one that I've I've really liked and wanted to get. There, there's there's a host of them. You can go up to West Marine. They sell them the full the, water the full yeah. kit. Yeah. Now they're not they're they're not a lot of these are not insulated. The way they make them is like David's saying, they're not insulated, they're made to go over your clothing. That way you can you can you can take clothing off, leave, leave your your uh, outer layer on, your shell, if you will. And that's something that would be really nice. Because one of the big things is during the summer when you're fishing, you're getting wet, but you're just not getting cold and you're not really realizing how wet you're getting while you're fishing because, because you're sweating. Because it's hot, right? Yeah. So that's something to keep in mind. You want to try to stay dry uh, this time of year. So we got all kinds of things happening downstairs, y'all. So just bear with us. But you're right, Eric. Now, and I've seen this a lot. And Eric, I want to let you relate to this because this is something that you've had personal experience. With. So I've seen guys get in their boat, and it's windy, and they're going to make a run. And First thing they do is they want to stay dry. They put on their waders. So Eric had an experience with that, and I think that's probably one of the worst things you can do while you're running a boat across the bay is be full buckled in and waders. Yeah. So I was I hunted some down in South Louisiana. Not, and by the way, I'm terrible duck hunting. <laughs> this is during your football days. Right? I am. I. I, I am a conservationist because I can't hit many ducks. Did you shoot a lot of shells? Oh yeah. yeah. We we had a great time while we were about 45 minutes away from civilization. But uh, that being said, I didn't I didn't hit many ducks. Never out there. But uh, one of my best friends, Mark King, uh, down in Homa, Louisiana, he would take me hunting, and you know, we would we would have the the, the, the insulated waders and one of the things that he taught me real 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 early on in the trip is you know we might put our our we might go as far as putting our feet inside those waders but we're going to keep the waders totally down and not and not pull them up because in south louisiana you'll have and of course all over the country you're going to have people that will put these insulated waders on or non-insulated waders you put those waders on and then you fall over the boat you fall out of the boat excuse me you have some sort of boating mishap you hit something in the water the boat's jostled you fall overboard then that that can lead to you uh, potentially drowning 
So you're not going to get these waders off typically when you fall out of the boat. Correct. And I had an experience, this was probably, I guess. And, and, and by the way, this, this is very common with shrimping boots. So, you know, a shrimper can fall overboard and they've got shrimp boots on and they, 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 they have a hard time getting them off. I mean, it's, it's, it can be scary. So, even though I had that experience growing up, on on our on our shrimp boats, we were never the type to get all geared up in the the uh, the, the, bibs. the full bibs and all that. Uh, that just was seemed like super uh, high end us. You know, we would dress to stay warm, but but never a lot of bib, you know, full bib gear and stuff. Or layer. But um, when my friend Mark was explaining to me about the bibs, you know, I was still fairly young. And I was I was kind of surprised. I never really thought of it, you know, from that perspective. And I didn't grow up weight fishing. So when I learned of how these accidents happen, it was pretty eye-opening. So if that's something you never heard, uh, and or you do know this, please make sure you pass this on to the younger boaters out there because there are younger boaters that, that may not know this. It can be very dangerous. That's correct. Two years, two, three, man, it may, let's say, say four years ago, there was a couple of guys that they went kayaking out in the northeastern in West Bay. And both kayaks flipped over. One guy made it to safety, the other guy was found. I, I helped in the search for a couple of days, but um, the other gentleman was found, young man was found two weeks later by some friends of mine, which made a huge fire But he ended up having the card heart jacket, steel toe boots, everything oh he had on to keep warm. And when he fell over, he couldn't he couldn't swim, he couldn't do so it made it was a bad thing. Yeah. And then you try to do that in say for example, a lot of times these things happen in say like a fifteen to twenty five mile an hour wind. And the water temperature is fifty five and the hypothermia yeah. you got problems. So look gotta, we we are by no means people that sell a lot of clothing and accessories not here but but we're just pointing out some general basics that that certainly are things you can forget about we want to remind you about them any questions let us know and then at the boat show this year david and i are going to do some galveston bay fishing shows where we're going to talk about different clothing at the show and we'll We'll try to cover some of the stuff in more detail where you've got some maybe some options. Yeah, sure. You know? Yep. And any, yep. Any, any questions, let us know. So no questions yet. So Eric, I mean, I guess let's let's just talk about the wind. We know the wind's going to be northeast and it's going to blow hard. So where to fish in these areas? Where, where where can you fish? You dress right and then, look. I got my boat. I've got all the gear. I'm going to be warm. And now where do I go? Well, one thing we know that if it blows for, let's say, for example, four or five days, the fish are going to be biting somewhere. Typically, they can bite really well. Yeah. Times too. So I'm not saying that it's that it's unheard of for fish to not bite for a week, but it's more heard of that there's going to be people that go out, sneak out, as you as we phrase it, and they're going to find some fish somewhere. That are biting. So, one of the places that comes to mind right off the bat that is a place that a lot of people like to go with this sort of, these sort of conditions is going to be the, inside the Moses Lake Lake. So, right down here. We're we're right here. The floodgates here. On a northeast wind, that's going to have you're going to have all this protection right here. That's really going to buffer and cut down that wind. I've been in Moses Lake floodgate on a 25 mile an hour wind. It's, it's not. It's nice. It is. Nice. And then you say, well, maybe the wind quit blowing. You do say that. Then you go look and you're like, no. Stick back in the floodgate. So that's going to be one spot that's really nice to fish on a northeast wind of, of, of velocity. And then. The second place that I like to fish is going to be in this Dickinson Bay. When 
whatever you want to call it, the, the curve, the cove, in the back, the back, the northeast corner. But right in here, you're going to get tremendous amount of coverage from all of this section of San Leon. It's really going to break the wind down. You've got a lot of houses, you have some trees, you're going to get very little wind. Even at a high velocity, it really cuts the wind down. It does. It makes it fishy. So this will be really nice. You have Dickinson, what we call Dickinson Bayou, Dickinson Bay Channel going into Dickinson Bayou. And Dickinson Bayou, you, there will be sections of Dickinson Bayou that are very nice. Now Dickinson Bayou is actually deep, but there are shallow aspects of Dickinson Bayou. So you know, that's something that you might want to take some time to learn. And yeah, you can run, I've run back there and you can actually run it. And it's, you know, you stay in the middle of it, you can find a little channel and it's four, four and a half foot deep. And then it comes off onto these flats that may be three foot deep. But it's all very official. Yeah, all very official. So then a third spot is gonna be inside Clear Lake. So, Taylor Lake, Clear Lake. You've got Clear Lake, Taylor Lake, all that will be really nice. Now, in Clear Lake on the northeast, there's going to be parts of Clear Lake that are going to be choppy. You just got to find your little spots. But you're going to get coverage in there. But it just depends is it a little more north in the northeast or is it a little more east in the northeast, okay? And then over here, you can get some protection a little bit. But I'm going to tell you, I, I've, I've never had a tremendous, I personally just have not had a lot of success on a high velocity northeast wind because there's not a lot to break the wind. There is. So if you wake fish, you can get in real tight in there and you're going to have some protection. But if you're in a boat like I am, this is not the best on a high velocity northeast wind. Also, David was pointing out right now, you've got, this is still, you know, fresh. Yeah, it's still, uh, you know, I would think it'd still be muddy from all the runoff that we've had. Now, the good thing is, is northeast wind's not going to drop the tide level like a west, northwest would. So it's going to mix some of this water up in here with some more salt water because it's going to keep the tides up. So eventually this part of Trinity Bay is going to clear up before you would know it, but they're not going to talk about it when it does, but it will start clearing up. Yeah. But if it was me, Eric, I would be back by the Wildlife Refuge in Frozen Point fishing in that back corner or East Galveston. Yeah, you now this is Frozen Point, northeast wind, you're going to have a lot of protection back here as well. And that's, I mean, that's a great white fishing spot in there, and you can get in there as long as you got the tide level, which we should have with that wind, and you can drift back in. But some big fish get caught out there this time of year. So the back corner of you know the wildlife refuge, the frozen point, all of this will be protected. Another couple areas, y'all, that are not on the chart, we can go to the Galveston Channel in the harbor. I call it Galveston Harbor, where they dock the shrimp boat, where they dock the cruise ships. They've got the docks back there. All that will be protected inside the harbor. There's been flounder caught in there, and there's been a few mangrove snappers starting to come out of there, which is a bonus. I mean, there's no limit on them. You can get in there and catch them. So, and they're not that neat. These fish aren't big, but they're well worth the table for them. So, and of course, the flounder. Another place you can fish under these kind of conditions would be Greens Lake in West Bay. And the area that I would call, you know, between Greens, Cut, and North Deer Island, all that in there, that would be fishable in there. Maybe not under the 25 to 30, but once it starts lifting up a little bit, all that water would be fishable. Okay. So the problem is, where do you launch? Like Eric said, here at Eagle Point, under Northeast at 25, we probably would you're, not. You're, you're, we're not going to recommend it. And well, we don't, got, we, uh, at 25, we won't even take your money. We're going to tell you don't launch the boat. Yeah. And so you've got different places to go. You've got inside 517, the launch right there at the bridge, 517, 146. You can launch inside Moses Lake at the fish spot, which would be protected. Clear Lake, they've got a couple launches there. Clear Lake, you can launch out of. Um, as far as getting to the back of East Galveston Bay, 
there's still a ramp here. I, I haven't been to it in years. You can launch back here. Or you could actually launch from the back of Stingery and just make a short run across. But this is a little harder accessible to get to than yeah, this is a lot of this, that's a trip. Yeah, that is a trip. So Galveston, you know, come on. You got the yacht basin does accept launches, y'all, but you pay by the foot. Two, I think it's two dollars a foot to launch a boat. And it's good for twenty four hours. So people say, Oh, the ramp's closed. No, the ramp's not closed, but they do charge you a, you know, a fairly substantial amount of money to launch there. And then the rest of it, you're just going to have to know your boat's capabilities and pick and choose where you want to go. Because the last thing you want to do is get into a situation to where maybe you launch from and you made a bad decision to get out, and then you're having even a worse time trying to get back. Yeah. So um, that's probably the toughest deal with this front is knowing when the winds are going to lay out. I mean, I personally don't believe they're going to blow, you know, two days and 25 to 30 on a northeast. I just don't see it. I think that the second day you'll start seeing a lay, a lay down. And by the third day, every morning it seems to blow on a northeast. You can come down here and people will come down and they'll leave Houston and they'll be like, man, it was only blowing like five or ten at my house. And you get down here and how hard is it blowing? 20 plus? Northeast is tough. Northeast is a tough wind. But dress for it, and there's places to finish. So, live bait supply, y'all. We do have live shrimp, and we will have an adequate supply of live shrimp and live croakers for this coming week. Where, you know, it's all going to be weather related. I don't know how big of a crowd we're going to have, and it just really depends on what this weather situation does. Yeah, we've got good supply of live shrimp, and look, we've had. Some anglers. Oh, you gonna talk about the croaker? Yeah, we have some anglers that have been doing good on croakers. So one of the things that this man and I were talking about, he had a really good point, was using the croakers has allowed him to catch the keeper size redfish. So when David and I went out, he and I caught with uh, Dan one of our uh, VIPs in the boat slips. So we caught a bunch of reds, but a lot of the reds we caught were too small. And so this gentleman was saying that uh, between here and the floodgate, he's been catching the keeper reds and he's been doing it with the croakers. So that is something to keep in mind. And what were you gonna say, David? I'll read some of this. Keep talking, Eric. Okay. Uh, but as far as the bait goes, we've got the shrimp, we have the croakers, and you brought up something David I was going to talk about. The croaker bite. No, but it was something else. Um, I brought it up. So, Carl, how you doing, buddy? Haven't seen you in a while. Is that Carl McGarvey? McGarvey, yeah. Carl McGarvey is one of our finest, and um, definitely thank him for his service, y'all. He's an Air Force pilot. And then your dad, talking about the same thing I was talking about with the northeastern wind. So, yeah. thank you all for listening and hanging in your comments. Yeah, it looks like my dad was talking about how the same thing I was saying. By the third day, it'll start. It may be blowing in the morning, but then it starts to lay up. Every a northeast wind will settle. Typically, it does. Yeah, one of the guys I did want to say this that I was talking about this last week. How one of the guys I grew up fishing with, he says after a real cold front and it stops blowing, Kima and Seabrook Flats, y'all, between between. Seabrook, Kima, and Red Bluff Reef, all in here. So, I'm going to be talking to you or Dan about trying that out. Oh, definitely. In other words, after this cold, after this cold front comes through and it's now a, a reduced temperature, he was just saying it's always seemed to really pay off for him. It does, because the access to deep water for these fish to slide, and then as that sun warms up, these flats warm up. 
because it's on the west side of the bay. They get, it gets more sunlight. The west side of a bay system, especially during the winter time, seems to warm up because you get all the sun and then eventually those fish will pull back. I've caught fish in 32 degree weather outside in three and a half foot of water over the same front. You and I did. And we've done it. Yeah. And so, and it's just, it's the, it's all in the sun and warming up that water just enough to where they pull up there to be on. And it may not last long, but when they go off, I mean, they're, they're going off, so it's good. Any other questions? Anybody have any questions on the board, on the Facebook page? I don't see anything. No, I think we just about covered it all. we did. I know Mr. Gray outside is like, we're going fishing. Daddy has to take Gray fishing. I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, my son Gray was on his way down here with my wife Rebecca, and all he kept talking about in the car was wanting to go fishing. So it looks like I'm fishing today. Hey, my buddy Philip Thompson of Avid Angler Jewelry. You met oh him. yeah, oh he has yeah. some beautiful so, jewelry. In fact, he's the one that caught the big bull shark. And That's he right. and he will be at the boat show. He will be at the boat show. And do you have some of his jewelry on? I do. He's giving me a bunch of pieces, y'all. Of this, of course, I tarnish real bad with my skin, and he's made this look for me. But all in sterling silver, he does gold. Well, nobody does not see that. Ah, oh, okay. So, so y'all see the fish on it? Yeah. Yeah, he has some beautiful and stuff. Then, um, I've I've been looking, but I haven't bought yet. I got to save some money to buy from him. So Phil Thompson makes it. He creates it all himself. In fact, he uh, created the first. He made the first piece of jewelry he ever made, as far as the fish. Was Philip and I go what, back in 1960. Uh, probably not that old. <laughs> but no, it was pretty close. It was like, you know, it was like in the 70s. So anyway, but yeah, we grew up in the same neighborhood. So I'm gonna get a fishing right report real quick. One of our customers. Okay, hang on one second, y'all. We'll see if anybody caught any fish. Pull towards the back. These guys went to the wells. I'm pretty sure. So we'll get a fishing report. And Juan Cruz today, I forgot to say, Juan Cruz, one of our slip customers, he came in and he had two reds, five or six trout, and about 10 big sand trout. So he's on a little bit of a roll and he's catching this fish right now on the shoreline. So he's going to the same place and he's on a roll. So I don't know what he's doing, but whatever he's doing, he's catching. And he's having some, you know, some pretty good days. You know, other, the other day he came in, he had 27 trout, so he did really good. And Eric's still running his mouth rather than giving me your report. So, of course, you know, Eric's house got hit by lightning, so they're still trying to get a new refrigerator and all that other stuff. And uh, for myself, I guess everything's been going good. My got a special guest coming. coming. Oh, we, got a, we got a guest star coming right now. So, hang on. Hold on, folks. About to get real. Eric, did you ever get a fridge? Oh, yeah, we got a fridge. Took it back? No, it wasn't delivered yet, but we realized that it wasn't going to fit properly. And, anyways, replaced it with with the similar refrigerator, you know, that, that exploded on the lightning strike. Right. And we have a, a, a one foot, basically one foot diameter hole in the chimney. Lightning came down the chimney and then out the chimney. Fried the garage door opener, various LED lights in the house. So, yeah, not good. The roof has over 50% of the roof is damaged, Dave. Really? Oh, yeah, you said that. You need, you need a new roof up here. Hey, no leaks. <laughs> no things don't fix it, right? <laughs> so, Philip Thompson goes, tell her about the mullet. Phil, man, you know. What's that? I, what? Tell her about the mullet. What were A mullet for clown. I hooked him oh, in the mouth. Oh, no, the t yeah. tail or the tail or the mouth. I hooked him in the mouth, but you know that. I hooked him in the mouth. Long Curry says hi, gives us a thumb up. 
Boy, Juan Cruz is on fire. Yeah, he caught him today. He caught two reds, five trap. I what? And Ted Sandy. So he did good. Here comes our special guest star. And look, y'all, here in the play, we do want to give everybody our prayers in Thousand Oaks, California. What a tragedy that was this morning. Something woke me up, told me to get up and turn off the TV, and I turned it on just as it was going to go. Oh, man. Not a bad Crazy deal. Crazy deal. And here comes our VIP, Mr. Fisher. Here, have a seat on the Have a seat, buddy. What's your name? Mike Wade. Mike who? Mike Wade. Mike, All right, Mike Way. Way. Mike Way ventured out today in this um, weather. How'd you do? Did pretty good. We live it out on the road. Got a nice spec. You see me over there. Let go back. In the wells? In the wells. There you go. Hey, the wells are well, in the area, here. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, can we get the GPS coordinates? I think, yeah, I don't know. I just <laughs> hey, top secret. Hush, hush. <laughs> no. At the Redfish Club 212 over there. There you go, guys. He just burned it to the ground. <laughs> so I would not try to venture out tomorrow with the North nope. East at 25. Would you? No. Oh, no. So you would wait a few days and those fish should still be there? Right? Absolutely. You catch them in the wintertime? Mm, I don't come out much in the winter. After okay. October, I'm not much in the So what you come here for today? They, they said the weather was going to be pretty good. The weather was going to be around 8, but not so. Was it a little bouncy out there? A little bouncy. Yeah. You all did good then? We did. So you got your full limits? We got all limits. That's good. Any size for them? Yeah, they, uh, they were somewhere between 16 and 20. That's good. Good yeah. eating, right? That's, that's what I want. I know. That's what people, people shy away from the black drum and say, oh, they're not good. Personally, I like a 20 to 22 inch red fish. Yeah. I'll let the other ones go. But a smaller black drum, the absolute, drum absolute. are absolutely great. Absolutely. They really are. Cut out the red in the middle. Yeah. You're good to go. And as far as sheephead, I I'm the one I will keep sheephead. I'll keep sheephead. Do you fillet or you grill the whole? See I see I yeah, so my sheephead I just cut the head off and take the guts out. Right. And I grill them the scales on and then peel that meat back because there's so much meat around the ribs. That's, that's, that's exactly right. right. Because the rib cases are so big. But the bone structure is big. Right. I gotta be a good uh grooming recipe for a bad boy, so I mean hey. I play them, I bring that bad boy. How are you gentlemen doing? You're doing real good. That's good. How are you? Doing good. That's my buddy. Good. He's like, he's in the line of vision. Stand <laughs> over a little bit, bud. Oh, come on. Come around here. Come on. Come on. Here comes the other guy. Here comes another one. Get in here. Break the soul. Don't, but introduce yourself. You got to take off that AM cap. Tell him. Come over here. Come over here. Get on. Tell them about a fishing trip. You're live right there. Stay right there. Right here? Okay. What's your name, bud? Ron Brent. Ron Brent. You had a good day today? Had a good day. Enjoyed it. A little windy out there, but man, hey, had a lot of fun. Caught some nice fish. Dead shrimp, live shrimp? Mostly of it was all live shrimp. Towards the end, though, we had a couple of days when we made use of them and caught some more of them. That's good. So we were talking about, before y'all came on live, we were talking about people catching drum at the wells. We've had, like you, and, and, and a few others that have gone out multiple times. The drum bites have been phenomenal. phenomenal. But, but what about, for you personally, have you all had any redfish lately? Oh, uh, yeah. it was, uh, what was it, two weeks ago? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, so man, he took a picture of this. Both of on your website. We, we laid it out on the reds. Uh, I think I should. I forgot to join in. We think we ended up with about six nice pepper trout. Good. About, about two weeks? Yeah. And so, live shrimp on the bottom, or shrimp. live shrimp under a popping cork, or dead shrimp on the bottom? Live shrimp on the bottom. That's what we've been telling you guys, see? <laughs> so we try to tell people, some people get it, like these guys get it, but they've been doing it in a while, so they know the routine out there. Yeah. So it's one of those, it's a good day. I mean, you launched, you, you talked about the wind, you know, yeah. like, man, I told y'all, I said, look, it ain't that bad. Yeah, that's it's not really wide cap. Bad. You get the anchor set? Yes. Just stay there and fish. You're nice angle. You're doing a good size They tell you 16, go 25. <laughs> right. Very good. Yeah, you got to get the right angle. Right? Hey, and listen to these guys. If they tell you something, hey, pay attention to them, you'll catch some fish. So the last thing you want to do is, right, go out with a $50,000 bug and a $5 anchor. <laughs> now, now, also, we were talking about on the show, I mean, you guys are dressed exactly like David was talking about. 
you've got the pants on that are water resistant. That's correct. The foul weather gear, water resistant. It looks like you probably were layered up because you were wearing yeah. a jacket, long sleeve shirt. Right. It, what, it, was a, it was a little chilly. It kind of looked chilly, it did. Yeah. It but it was nice, uh, you know, it actually got cooler after we were out there for a while. That's this right. morning we went out, it was okay. I took my jacket off. And we're out there fishing, and that fog came in a little bit earlier. Got made right. it up it's the air back, it's a little damp. Yeah, when the fog came in, got a little damp, I put the jacket back on. You got to stay dry yeah. to keep we, warm. We yeah. were expecting rain today. We were expecting right. rain today. Yeah. Not, not this cold. It was cold out there. Otherwise, it was going to be. Yeah. yeah. It, okay, it, it was no nice. Can work that out there. There it is, guys. See, we don't lie. We try to tell everybody what's going on, right? Yeah. Any more questions, Eric, before we sign off out of here? We can go on and on and on. That's it. That's it, guys. Okay, guys. Hey, we appreciate, appreciate all. Thank you for being willing to participate. Yeah. We're, we're very Next time we'll let you know that you're live. <laughs> so you know, stay good and hey, look, excuse the Aggie cap. Oh, oh man. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> top of my Aggie. You got to get a little better at football. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they fight. <laughs> Sometimes they don't fight hard enough at the end. All right, guys, here we are. Hey, thanks for joining the Galveston Bay Fishing Show. Thanks for coming on short notice. We'll be live next week here at Eagle Point Fishing Camp in hopefully sunny San Leon, Texas. Amen. Signing off, y'all.